All right, this is problem number 151E. It's on page 33 in your text. Once again, I'll read it. The basic barometer can be used as an altitude measuring device in airplanes. The ground control reports a barometric reading of 28.9 inches of mercury, while the pilot's reading is 26 inches of mercury. Estimate the altitude of the plane from ground level if the average air density is uh, 0.075 pounds mass per cubic foot and G is 31.6 feet per second squared. All right. Let's sketch the schematic of what's given. There's the airplane. We'd like to determine the elevation, the height of the plane. I guess I'll just use H for that. Where the average density of the air is 0 0.75, or excuse me, 0 0.075 pound mass per cubic foot. And G is an average of 31.6 feet per second squared. Now, notice as you go up in elevation, the air density is going to, to, to decrease and the acceleration of gravity will decrease. Now, the acceleration of gravity change is not worth talking about, but the density change of the air may be. Okay? So, in any case, on the ground, there's a barometer. Now, I'm going to add a couple things to this sketch. I'm going to add two barometers. Now, what is a barometer? Well, a barometer is just basically an inverted tube of liquid. So there's all this liquid in the tube. And in the bowl beneath, where the atmosphere is pressing down on, on the mercury in this case. Now, the pilot also has a barometer. Now, obviously, a regular classic barometer would not be practical in the airplane, but um, principles still apply. So, there are two barometers. Now, the, the elevation, the height of the mercury in each of these barometers is different. So, let me label this one the height on the plane. The height of the mercury barometer on the plane is 26.0 inches of mercury. The height on the ground, let me label that HG, is 28.9 inches of mercury. Why are they different? Well, they're different because there's a different atmospheric pressure on the ground than in the, the airplane at, at elevation. So that's why there's a difference. Now, why is there a difference in pressure between those two points? Well, because there's less air sitting on top of this level than there is at the bottom, right? And just like as you go down in a swimming pool or down in the ocean, pressure increases as you, you, you dive, right? Well, that's the same thing that's going on here. You dive down on the ground, get down to ground level, you're under a deeper portion of this ocean of air that we live under. Okay, so talking about the difference in the pressure between the plane's elevation and the ground elevation, we could relate that pressure difference to the height of the air. Let's make this very clear. We're talking about the, the difference in height of the air from ground to plane and the pressure difference from ground to plane. Okay? That's what this height and this equation refers to. What confuses students about this problem typically is that this height, there's two other heights of mercury to deal with, and they're confused about what to do with all of that. Now, the basic barometer equation tells us that at the plane, the pressure at the plane's elevation is just the density times acceleration of gravity times height. Now, what, what density am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about a height column of mercury, right? So I'm talking about the density of mercury because I'm applying this equation to this barometer. So this must be the density of uh, mercury. Let's label that Hg. I can write a similar equation for the barometer on ground. So on ground, the pressure is the density of mercury times acceleration of gravity times the height uh, of the barometer on ground. Once again, what height am I talking about here? I'm just talking about the height of the mercury column. That's all. And not the height of the plane. So putting these two equations together, let's label them 1 and 2. If we put 1 with 2, then what we find 
is that the difference between the pressure on the plane and the pressure on ground is just the difference in the right hand sides of these two equations, right? So that's the density of the mercury times the acceleration of gravity multiplied by the height of the plane less the height on ground. Now I just factored out the rho g for these two equations to make it more compact. Okay? But notice that this difference is talking about a difference in height of two mercury columns and multiply that by the density of, uh, uh, of mercury. In this equation, this density is the density of air. And we're talking about the height of the air, which is what we're trying to find essentially, right? Is the height of that air column. Now, the difference in pressure on this left-hand side can be given by this pressure difference. Okay, now, we have to be a little bit careful because of the signs. Okay, we have to plug things in the proper order, but that's pretty easy to do. Okay. <clears throat> So let's, let's go for it. The pressure in the plane less the pressure on ground, this delta P, would be equal to the density of mercury times acceleration of gravity times height of the plane less height of the mercury column, I'm sorry, height of the mercury column on the plane less height of the mercury column on the ground. I just repeated this equation. In fact, you know what, I should have just done it this way. So if this left-hand side is the same as the left-hand side of this equation, then I can simply write equals negative density of air, acceleration of gravity, and uh, height of the plane. Now we have to be a little bit careful here. We're taking the plane first, less ground second. So the height we have to take is height of plane, less height of ground. If we take the ground to be our reference, so positive y-axis yeah, upward, of course, uh, and so ground is our reference, then that second height is a zero, right? The height on ground is a zero. So this would simply be h. And so what we need to do is solve for the uh, height h of the plane itself by density of mercury, acceleration of gravity, height of plane less height on ground divided by negative density of air g. And so you notice that g crosses off. Now why did they give us g then? The reason they gave us g, go to the front of your book and look in the inside cover and look for pressure conversion factors. You'll notice that there's a pressure conversion factor for uh, inches of mercury. Now that, that pressure conversion factor that can take you from inches of mercury to atmospheres or to PSIA assumes a particular acceleration. It assumes regular g, 32.2. So if you were to use that conversion factor to come up with the pressure difference instead of going through the barometer equation, then g would be involved and they want you to use the g that they've given. Okay. So there's two different ways of solving this problem. Anyway. Now, the uh, density of mercury, uh, I don't recall, was that given or no? Let's see. You had to find it. You had to find it? Okay, so it's in the back of the book. 13.54. Sorry? 13.54. 13.54, thank you. Yeah, I think that's the specific gravity. I thought you were giving us a page number or something. What I came up with was 850 pounds mass per cubic feet. And I found it in the back of the book, and for the sake of the video, I won't take the time to go and find it, but it's back there and you can find it. Um, the height of the mercury column on the plane is 26 inches of mercury. The height of the mercury column on ground is 28.9. Both of these are inches of mercury. That needs to be divided by the, the negative of the density of air. And the density of air was given, 0 0.075 pounds mass per cubic feet, cubic foot. So you notice the density units go away. And we're left with inches of mercury. Now, be careful here. We're not really saying inches of mercury because we're talking about a height that has to be the height of the air column. Inches are just a unit of, of length, right? So um, at some point you have to drop this inches of mercury idea and just realize you're calculating inches of height. 
essentially what's happened is we've gone from density of mercury to density of air, and that's where that conversion factor happened. But anyway, um, now I don't want the height of the plane in inches. That would be inconvenient. So let's make it feet. So one foot per 12 inches gives us feet of height of the column of air. If you plug that in your calculator, you find it's 2,739 feet. Now, if you look at the answer that's given, they give their answer as 2,737 feet. Why two feet different? Besides rounding? Well, there's a couple different places. First of all, because they gave us the acceleration of gravity g, they probably did not use the Barabra equation. They probably calculated these two pressures by simply converting, converting inches of mercury to PSIA or atmospheres or something like that, and then dealing with the unit from there. Not only that, they could have used a different density of mercury. That's one place where it could have happened. Um, and I think those are the two main things that would contribute to it. I used 846, and I came out with 2726. OK, so you used a slightly lower density of mercury and came out with a number closer to theirs. OK, that makes sense. Any other questions? All right.